Hi everyone and welcome to our first SYP Oxford webinar on digital communication in publishing with Carlos Gemino. Um, I'm so happy you could join us today for this very timely and informative event and I hope you enjoy it. Um, I wanted to reassure you at this stage that we cannot see or hear you in the audience as I know that's often a worry in these online webinars. Um, and as this is an SYP event, I wanted to share a bit of information about the Society of Young Publishers before we get started. So, the Society is open to anyone in the first 10 years of their publishing career, as well as those in allied industries and those hoping to get into the industry. There are currently regional branches in Oxford, London, the Southwest, the North, Scotland and Ireland, all of which organise a range of events and digital content you can access online. The Oxford branch has some events coming in the next month, including a literary pub quiz on 14th of July, covering categories from classics to children's literature to recent book news. And our next book club will take place on Zoom on 20th July, in which we'll be discussing Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo, which happens to be available as a free audiobook from BBC Radio 4. Check our social media channels for more details and to get involved. And um, this webinar on digital communication in publishing is a reflection and discussion on the importance of communication in digital channels in publishing today. From why Zoom and YouTube have become ubiquitous to how we can prepare for these new methods of communication and what can be done to make them easier and more productive, this one hour seminar will provide a selection of thoughts and ideas to make your communication and your career in publishing better, brighter and braver. There will be a few polls for you to participate in anonymously during the webinar and there will be the opportunity to ask questions at the end. Feel free to submit questions throughout the webinar using the Q&A function you should be able to see on your screen. Um, these questions will then be answered by Carlos in the Q&A section at the end of the webinar. If you have any technical issues during the webinar, please use the chat function in Zoom or contact SYP Oxford on Twitter or Facebook and we'll do everything we can to help. If there are any wide scale problems with the Zoom call, which we're not expecting, but could happen, um, we will post on our Twitter channel. Please note this webinar is being recorded and we will circulate the recording in the days following the event. This webinar is being led by Carlos Gemino, a public speaking coach at CG. Carlos has held various management and leadership roles throughout his 16 year publishing career and founded CG, a public speaking coaching consultancy in 2017. So without further ado, I'll now hand over to Carlos. Thank you very much for your introduction, Terence. And uh, I'd like to begin by saying thank you to all of you for joining us today and spending an hour with us. Thank you to the Society of Young Publishers for inviting me to, to run this webinar today. And a special thank you to my production team, Charis and Elena, for organizing the events, for keeping me on track and on time. And in addition to the introduction Charis has just given you, I'd just like to say that I'm a public speaking coach because I believe public speaking is everywhere. It's on the bus. It's in your family breakfast, it's at work, and it's everywhere. And it has an impact on your personal and professional life. I also believe that there is something unique, something different, something special in, in all of you, in each of you. And being able to articulate, to, to communicate, and to transfer that uniqueness to, to those around you is a skill for life in a skill for your career. And that's why I'm here today, to, to share my knowledge and my passion for, for this topic with you. We, we only have an hour today, which means we, we cannot cover everything around digital communication or public speaking online. So I'm, I'm gonna focus on, on a few initial thoughts about the publishing industry and try and, and place this webinar in the context of the industry today. And then I'll run you through the why, the how, and the what of online communication and public speaking on, on camera, on a computer. We'll offer you an opportunity to ask any questions you may have during the Q&A at the end. And 
when we come back from the Q&A, I will have some homework for, for all of you to take away. And I will share my contact details in case any of you would like to continue the conversation beyond today's webinar. As I said, I'd like to begin by, by sharing a few thoughts from my 16 years in, in publishing, from my own experience on, on where we are in the industry and um, how this webinar and online communication fits into that new reality. And I'd like to, to share with you three, three thoughts, three ideas, which are mine and mine only, and um, may come across as an oversimplification, but it's my oversimplification of the industry today. And I'd like to begin by saying that the publishing industry has been going through change for the last 10 to 15 years. And uh, in particular, there are two changes that are important to bear in mind. The first one is about the transition from print to electronic publishing. And uh, this is not just about moving from publishing print books or print journals to, to publishing electronic books and electronic journals, but the, the transition to digital has an impact on every process in publishing from production to editorial to marketing and sales. And that's something to, to acknowledge and to be very mindful of. The second one, perhaps more important, is that the publishing industry, as, as many others, is no longer run by a hierarchy of men. I know most employees in publishing happen to be women, but historically, all the big jobs went to the, to the men. And, and that's no longer the case. There is a, a healthy change going on where it doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman, whether you have a very senior title or a very junior title, and it doesn't matter whether you are in your 20s or in your 50s. What matters is creativity, ideas, values, principles, and a desire to do something new, to do something different, and to do something that has an impact on society. There are, of course, many more changes going on in the industry, but I think those two are important to, to be aware of and to, to remind ourselves of. The second one is what I call the three heads. In, in the past, um, you, you either went into book publishing or, or journal publishing, or, or maybe database publishing. But publishing, publishing houses have been adapting to any reality, and uh, in my experience, we now can see three major categories in publishing. And to be, to be aware of these categories is important to you because you need to know which one you, you have an interest in, which one you have a passion in, and which one you can make a difference in. And those three heads or three categories are education, research, and entertainment. And uh, it's interesting how some publishers and um, Pearson and Elsevier on the academic side come to mind are beginning to define themselves as an education company or a research company or a technology company, but they no longer call themselves publishers. And finally, and, and to understand where, where the industry is and, and how this webinar fits into that new reality, I'd like to, to make a brief mention to, to what I call the three monsters, which are Amazon, Google, and Facebook. And those three monsters have changed completely the way editorial production, marketing, and sales operates and will continue to do so for years to come. When you go to a job interview, when you apply for a job, when you do a new job in publishing, you need to be very, very mindful of these three, three changes, three these three realities within the industry. I could speak for another hour just on the changes and, and on these initial thoughts, but I think as an introduction for now is enough. And uh, I'd like to move on to the why of digital online communication or online public speaking. And uh, I'm beginning with the why because 
because of a TED talk I, I watched years ago from Simon Sinek, which, which is called Begin, Start With Why. It's no longer enough to, to say what you know, uh, what degree or, or master's or MBA you have. It's not enough to say how you do things. It's fundamental to explain and to understand in your head why you do what you do, why you like what you like, and why you are applying for a job, why you want to work in publishing, and why you, you believe you can make a difference. And, and to say that you want to work in publishing because you like books, and I like books too, is no longer enough. So you need to spend some time thinking about why you think you can make a difference to, to publishing and to, to communicating in publishing. And within that why, within online communication, online communication in publishing, I'd like to, to share three ideas, three thoughts with you. The first one, time and cost is very obvious, but something all of you need to remember. We, we all are communicating on, online, on, on camera, on Zoom these days, because it's faster and cheaper. And, uh, and, and that's the main reason publishers uh, have realized how much money they can save, how much time they can save by communicating online instead of sending somebody to the other side of the world for a week or two. And this is key because when you communicate online, your, your language, your communication should be as economical as the tool itself. Online meetings don't need to be an hour long. Online interviews don't need to be an hour long. 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes is enough. Remember, those people interviewing you or those people communicating with you will have time and cost in mind. Remember that. The second one, we, we've all experienced for three months, for the last three months, the, what I call the unexpected. It doesn't have to be a global pandemic, but things can happen. It could be a car breakdown on the way to an interview. It could be something totally unexpected happening in the family or at work. And uh, those people you are communicating with, those people who will be interviewing you for a job will, will uh, hope, will expect, that you are ready for the unexpected and you are able to use any of the available tools to communicate online and I will mention a few of them later on quickly and efficiently. So time and cost and being able to handle the unexpected is part of that why of online communication. I know, I know you know this, I know this is obvious, but try and remember when you communicate on camera online. And the third one is, is my favorite and it's the, the most important of the three, is what I call the YPB, your personal brand. Digital communication is fundamental to your career in publishing because it is the best tool you have at your disposal to build and sell your personal brand. When you hear a personal brand, some of you may think that it's a very artificial or even a plastic concept, something that, um, that is not true, that you fabricate because it's the way you want to come across. But that's not my definition of personal brand. For me, personal brand is about values, principles, and, and ideas, and, and about your identity. And being on camera for 15 minutes or, or even for five minutes during a meeting or an interview gives you a priceless opportunity to tell them, to tell the world who you are, why you matter, and why you have a place in the industry. And, and I'd like to say that those two are the key components behind the why. Understanding, understanding the why behind online communication, I know, doesn't make it any easier it's still a challenge, online communication. And that's why we're here today. And that's why, before, before we move on and to give you a, a, a little rest from, from me for a while, we're gonna run our first poll, which Charis B contacting. Charis, over to you. All right, thanks, Carlos. Um, so I'll launch the first poll now. 
So the question we have for you is how comfortable are you with digital public speaking on a scale from very uncomfortable to very comfortable? So I'll share the results now. So it's very mixed, but like quite in the middle. Okay, so so I can see we, we have one one colleague who is very comfortable with digital public speaking. Congratulations, that's that's amazing. <laughs> the the rest of the results don't surprise me. Um, and uh, it's within what, what I had expected. And um, and that leads us nicely um, into the the next piece of the, the presentation today, which is the how of online communication. How can you feel a bit more comfortable? How you can feel uh, a bit um, more confident? And how you can do everything you can do face to face when, when speaking on camera and, and communicating online. And um, when the computer responds to me, and we move on to the next slide, uh, I'll share with you the three elements and the three components of how you can make online public speaking easier and better. Uh, by now, uh, you will have noticed that I have a strong interest for grouping everything into threes. Ideas, thoughts, components, elements, theories, categories. And uh, the reason is, uh, the number three is the number we, we can remember most easily. Um, by, by grouping things into, into, into threes. Uh, not only you can remember things more easily as a speaker, but those listening to you will also be able to remember those things more easily as well. And frankly, if anybody tells you more than three things, it's highly likely but that by the time they are on, on number four, you will be thinking about something else. So remember that as well when you communicate online um, groups of three. We, we call them in, in our sector the, the golden rule of three and, and that's why you, you are seeing me applying it all the time. And, um, hopefully the computer will allow me to move on to the next slide soon. And uh, something that uh, is part of this webinar and is happening live now is challenges with technology. You need to be ready to cope with the unexpected, as I mentioned earlier. You need to be ready to, to, to cope with uh, technology going wrong. And it's always useful to have something in your mind that you can share with, with the audience. And in fact, I do have one thing that I can share with you while I wait for, for the slides to come to come up and that's the first component of how to make public speaking easier, more comfortable and more confident. And that's what I call the PPP rule. Now by now you, you, you must be coming up with all kinds of ideas about what PPP stands for. And, and don't worry, I'm gonna tell you straight away. PPP stands, nothing too exciting here. PPP stands for prepare, prepare, prepare. And, um, and I know, I know you know that, but uh, often we, we forget. And, and there are two, two things that you have to prepare uh, particularly well before online communication, whether it's uh, a Zoom meeting or a webinar or a job interview or a YouTube video that you're creating for a project or for a job interview, whatever it may be. When you are communicating online, there are two things in particular that you need to, to prepare on. The first one is your audience. You need to know who you are speaking with, who you are communicating with, whether it's somebody interviewing you for a job or you are already in a job and your, your boss um, calls you into an online meeting or uh, you are joining a webinar and, you, and there is some level of participation expected you need to understand who your audience is, the names, the job titles, their preferences, the needs, the problems, and, uh, and their expectations for that online activity, online communication activity. That's, that's fundamental. 
The second piece that you really need to prepare on is the technology. You need to know which application they're using. And there are many in the market from Microsoft Teams to Google Meetup, Skype, obviously. There's something called GoToWebinar or also known as GoToMeeting.com. And of course, Zoom and uh, Facebook Live and many others. But you need to know before you move on to that um, online communication action, before you jump onto that job interview, before you have that meeting or that video call, you need to understand who you are speaking with and, uh, and which application they're using. And you, you need to familiarize yourself with that application as much as possible. In, in fact, my recommendation is that, uh, and th this will be part of the, the homework we'll, we'll give you at the end of the, the webinar, my recommendation is that you familiarize yourself with, with as many of them as you can in that context of preparation. Um, many of them offer the possibility to, to sign up for free. Zoom, for instance, gives you the option to have a 40-minute a free account where you can practice and, and prepare. And I strongly recommend that, that you, do, you do that. And uh, Zoom being by far the most, uh, the most successful, the most popular of all, but any of the others I've mentioned are, are equally valid. I'm gonna take a little break for a second, if, if I may, and that will give you time to, to take a sip of water, digest everything I've said so far, and think of questions for the Q&A. And while you do that, uh, Charis, my, my lovely producer, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a second, and then, I'll try and start it again and see if by doing it that way, we can move on to the next slide, which is how. And yes, we are back on track. Thank you all for your, for your patience. Uh, as I said, the first is of how making online communication easier and uh, more comfortable and more confident is the PPP rule. Prepare, prepare, prepare. You need to know who you are communicating with, find out as much as possible online, and you need to understand the technology, how it works, and what's expected of you. The second one, and I'm, I'm incredibly passionate about this one, both in online communication and and on face-to-face -face communication. And that's brevity and, and relevance. Most of you, I, I believe, will have been educated in the West, like me. And uh, the, the, the Western educational system tells us that the more we say when we speak or when we write, when you take an exam, the more we say, the better. The more knowledgeable, the more impressive, the more authority we gain. Uh, it's not the case. Uh, in online communication and in communication in general, less is more. In fact, I would recommend that you limit your thoughts to a maximum of three key points, going back to that golden rule of three. If it's one thought, if you can bring your ideas, your pitch, your um, your communication focus to one idea and expand on it, that's even better. So maximum of three, if it's one or two, even better. I know this takes practice. I know this is not easy. When you are on camera, you're feeling nervous, your, your brain is racing, and there are a million things you want to say. And they tend to come out in, in a chaotic and uh, disordered way. Don't worry, that's, that's fine, work on it. But when you can, try and bring them down to three, two, or one. And they need to be relevant. And let me explain what I mean by this. We, as I said, on, on, when we're on camera, when we're on online meetings, or when we are on an online job interview, we talk and talk and talk. And not everything we say is relevant. Make sure that what you say adds value. Your words, your message, your communication needs to solve a problem, needs to remove a barrier, needs to make something easier for 
the person communicating with you. If it doesn't, don't say it. Again, less is more. So second key concepts within this piece, how to make online communication easier, more confident and more comfortable in addition to the preparation is brevity and relevance. And finally, and, and again, this is exciting and this is important, and I'm, I'm glad that you can see me on camera because hopefully you're seeing me using this technique myself. The, the two most powerful communication tools you have, face-to-face -face and online, are your hands and your eyes, and you should use them. Because by using your hands and your eyes, you're gonna become more energetic you're going to become clearer. Some of those nerves will go away by, by moving your hands and bringing uh, a bit of movement to your body. And it, they can help you emphasize points and make points clearer and um, gain that gravitas and that authority that you won't have if you remain totally quiet. Using your eyes online can be a bit tricky. Uh, hopefully you can see mine uh, relatively well, but if you open your eyes, if, if you use your eyes to engage, to look at the camera and um, help you support your message, your communication will be stronger. It will be more human. It will be more personal and as a consequence, more efficient. Some of you may have reservations around being on camera. When, when you are communicating digitally online. And I understand it. It's, it, it can be uncomfortable being on camera, especially if you have many people at the other end of the screen. But whenever possible, you should. If, if your face is not on camera, you're missing 50% of your communication potential. And that includes your eyes, your face, and your hands. So remember that. And finally, I'd like to touch on, on the concept of, of silence. Because we are nervous when we are on camera and when we, we speak to, to a computer or when there's somebody at the other end interviewing us for a, for a job or we are having a meeting with our director or our manager, because we are nervous, we keep talking until somebody stops you or until you run out of oxygen don't, don't do that. Stop. Make a pause. Give yourself time to breathe, to compose yourself, to think of the next thing you want to say. And also, by, by pausing, you will be giving those communicating with you a time to digest everything you've said, to breathe, to think, and to be ready for the rest of the conversation. And um, I, I couldn't emphasize this anymore. Pausing in silence when communicating online is key. It takes practice. It, it will not come out naturally immediately, but whenever possible, try it. It will give you that, again, that gravitas, that authority, irrespective of your experience or your age. If you, if you are able to, to stop when you speak for a second or two, it will give you that gravitas, that authority, and that weight that you need to, to nail that job or to close a successful meeting with your bosses or whatever it may be. And uh, yes, I've given you a few clues about uh, how to become a bit more confident and, and clear and assertive. But the reality is that it is difficult and you need some practice. And um, to give me now uh, a little break and uh, recover from the uh, technology fail that we went through earlier, Charis is going to run the, the second poll of the evening. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Carlos. Um, so our next poll is... Have you received any formal training from your university or employer on public speaking? If so, what form has this taken? Um, and just select as many options that apply to you. Okay, I think the, the results don't surprise me this time either. 
and uh, glad to see that some of you have already had some some kind of training or coaching on this but clearly the majority haven't and um, and this is something I'm, I'm very interested in obviously um, but I think making communication coaching and communication training something that is part of your academic life or your professional life is is very important uh, not all of you will get that from your employer whether you're a student now or whether you're employed not many of you will get that but in the meantime there are things that, that you can do even with that, that, that coaching and that training to to begin practicing and improving the what of public speaking and um, uh, looks like uh, the webinar doesn't like polls for whatever reason so I'm having to stop sharing and sharing my screen again hoping that we can move on to the what's of public speaking and online communication in general so just to recap we've we've gone through the why of of online communication and uh, and the how and I've shared with you a few ideas, a few ideas about what you can do, how you can make that process a bit easier. But some of you may, may be thinking that that's all very good, Carlos, but what can I actually do to, to improve, to, to practice, to move on to the next level, especially without that academic or professional help from my university or my employer? And here are three things that I can, I can recommend you today. Three things that you can apply tomorrow. You can apply next week, next month on any job interview, on any online meeting you may have. And uh, this list could have 30 things in it, 40 recommendations, but I doubt that you, you would remember. So I'm gonna focus on the three that I think could make a difference to, to your online communication starting tomorrow. The first of which is what I call the PPP rule 2.0 or the PPP rule on asteroids. And in this case, the PPP stands for practice, practice, practice. And, and I know, I know the you, you don't have many opportunities. Or do you? You, you do actually. The, one of the biggest challenges or mistakes we make is that we wait until we have a job interview online on camera to practice or we wait until we have a big meeting with our boss to practice and it's too late that's that's the time when you have to be ready to deliver uh, confidently and successfully so my recommendation in the context of the ppp rule 2.0 is take advantage of everyday little opportunities you have speaking with your family, speaking with friends online, on camera, on Zoom, on Facebook, on your iPhone. Take advantage of the meetings that are small and easy with your team or your friends and begin practicing some of the things I've highlighted to you today. By doing that, when the big job interview on camera comes along, when the big meeting with your bosses or your directors or the DMD comes along, you will be ready and you will be in a position to deliver. Don't wait to practice until those big events happen. Take advantage of every everyday opportunities, however little or, or simple they may sound. But as I said at the beginning, public speaking happens everywhere, all the time. Begin now. Secondly, I'd like to touch on relationships and let me explain what I mean by this. Many of us will Many of us think of online communication um, as a conversation on camera, a conversation through the computer, uh, or a job interview through, through the camera or the computer. Online communication begins before you are on camera, before you are on Zoom, before you are on that job interview, and after that one hour meeting finishes. You need to nurture relationships with those people you communicate with online regularly. And I know how much you all like Twitter. 
and, and Facebook. I do, and, and I think there's something called TikTok. And those are great, don't get me wrong, but if you are serious about building a professional profile in publishing, if you're serious about making online communication easier and more successful for you, you need to nurture your relationships before and after online communication. If you jump onto a call and you haven't engaged with those people before or after, they will see a name or a face, but they will see a name or a face that they don't recognize, they know nothing about. And it can be something as easy or simple as sending a, an email or a, a note on LinkedIn explaining who you are, why you're going to join that meeting, and what value you bring to the table. If you do that, by the time you jump online, there will already be a relationship, a connection between you, you'll feel more relaxed, so will they, and that will make the whole experience so much easier and more successful. Two quick notes on this. LinkedIn is, is priceless for this. And again, I know how much you all like Twitter and Facebook. If you are committed to improve, I recommend to use LinkedIn more often. Secondly, a book recommendation. Maybe some of you were missing a, a book recommendation from this webinar. And, and as I said, I like books too, so here you go. There is a book written by an American called Keith Ferracci. We can email you the, the, the name afterwards if, if you need it, Keith Ferracci. And the book is called Never Eat Alone. And it's got a coffee and a muffin on the cover. Uh, you'll find it on Amazon. And it's the best book I've read about networking and building relationships before and after online communication, precisely to make online communication more relaxed, more human, more personal, um, easier. So never eat alone, Keith Ferrazzi. And finally, and, and this will also bring the core of my content to an end, and we'll, we'll move on to the, the final summary in the Q&A. Finally, but very important, is what I call your, your narrative or, or your style. And, and what this means is your story. Communicating online is about telling your story, who you are, what you know, how you do it, but more importantly, why, why you can add value, why you are in publishing, why you, are, why you matter and why you are different and unique. And in any story, there are characters, yourself being the main character of your story, obviously, but there are colleagues, teachers, mentors, coaches, directors, managers, friends that need to become part of that story. And then there is always a conflict and a conflict resolution in any story. Again, which problem do you solve? Which need do you help with? Which barrier do you remove? How your story fits into their needs, their problems, their own story. And I know, again, this takes time and it, and it takes practice, but begin, begin flirting with the idea of um, not just sharing data or sharing information, but begin flirting with the concept of telling your story and introducing yourself as many times as you need to, explaining your why and telling people why, why you're here and why you're on camera and why they should listen. Your personal brand and your story are things that you need, you need to bring into your communication line, things you can do to make that more successful, more confident, more comfortable and, and easier. There is another book. Uh, I, I wasn't going to include this, this book recommendation, but I'm going to because I think it's important. There is another book that I strongly recommend you read, and I always make this recommendation. And the book is called The Storyteller's Secret. The Storyteller's Secret by Carmine Gallo, another American. Fantastic book. It teaches you beautifully how to, to build the stories, how to tell them, and how to make that a habit. And I, I, again, alongside Ferrati's book, I strongly recommend it. And I'm, I'm almost bringing my, my piece to an end today before I give you an opportunity to ask, to ask questions. 
Something I forgot to mention at the beginning is to explain why there is a geisha on this slide and on, on the slide at the beginning, the one you saw with the agenda for, for the webinar. And there is a geisha on the screen now again because I love Japan and because Japanese culture brings to communication a minimalism, a simplicity and a beauty that it's for all of us to imitate and to aspire to. And, and that's why I use Japanese images whenever I can to remind myself of, of that concept of, of beauty, simplicity and minimalism. And uh, if I had to, to choose three things from everything I've said today, three things that you need to remember and take away with you and apply from tomorrow, those are your personal brand, your story, principles, values and ideas, brevity and relevance, one, two, three, if it's one thing even better, and what value do you add, what value your words and your message bring. And finally, very, very important, practice, 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 and relationships. And uh, happy to continue the conversation on this and many other elements that you could apply after the webinar. But I think for now, it's time for me to stop and give Charis and all of you an opportunity to ask me any questions you may need to ask or any clarifications that you require uh, before, we, before we close. Thank you, Charis. Great, thanks so much, Carlos. Um, so we have some questions which have already come through, but I'm going to just cheekily ask you one of my own first. Okay, um, go for it. So you mentioned earlier about how we should use video whenever possible in online calls and meetings. Um, but sometimes that just isn't possible. Um, so how best can you hold your colleague's attention using only your voice? Uh-huh, uh-huh. That, <laughs> that is very true, Terry. You, you will not always have the, the luxury or the privilege of a camera or being on screen. And uh, communication becomes even more challenging then. I would recommend, if, if you find yourself in that situation, you you have a, a meeting on the phone where you cannot see the other person or you have an interview, a job interview on the phone where you cannot see the body language from the other person, I would recommend two things. One is prepare before the meeting. Investigate, research about the person you'll be speaking with if you know who they are. Look them up on social media, email them, try and find out what are their interests? What's their profile like? What, what level of experience they have? Who they are and how they fit into publishing? And, and this is relatively easy in today's world. There is a limit to how much you can find out about someone, but you can find, find out a fair amount before you speak with them on the phone. So if it's not an impromptu call and you know that call is happening and, and you know you will not have access to video, investigate, research, find out as much as you can, you can about them. And as I recommend it, if you can, engage with them offline before that call. Send them an email, send them a Facebook message, a LinkedIn message, whatever it may be. Give them a, a call in advance even to say hello and introduce yourself. So prepare before the call. And secondly, before you get on the phone, be very clear about what you want to say. And there will be one, two or three key points that you really want to make before the conversation finishes. I always recommend that you structure your phone conversations in three pieces, introduction, body and conclusion. So you introduce yourself, you, you, you put the conversation in context if you like, then you make your key points and then you bring the, the call to an end with ideally with a call to action or an action point for the future. So in summary and in response to your question, Charis, I would say preparation is key. Research who your communicators are and simplicity, brevity and relevance, intro, body and, and conclusion. If, if you can bring in pauses during that conversation, silences, even better, even better, because you, you will show that you're in control that you are confident and that you know what you're, what you're talking about. Great, thanks so much. That'll be very helpful in my upcoming calls. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so from our audience, we have two very similar questions from Carl and Catherine. Okay. Uh, and they're asking about visual cues. So it's much harder to pick up visual cues um, on when to let others speak in video calls. So do you have any tips for how to help deal with that type of engagement to kind of remove the awkwardness of people speaking over each other? Um, whether that's in team meetings, interviews, or while on a panel with others. Uh -huh. Well, thank you, Carl and, and Catherine, for, for your question. Uh, and, and, and it's one that I'm really excited about because it, it takes us into the, the wonderful world of, of body language or the lack of body language, as you indicate. Uh, it's not easy. I, I know it's, it's not easy. I don't have any, any magical potion, any, any magical trick for, for you to overcome this, this barrier. But one thing that works really well when you are on camera and you are struggling to read the other person and, and their reactions because maybe because the lighting is poor or because you don't see the rest of their body or whatever the reason, if you're struggling to, to pick up those cues, as you say, I would recommend two things. Ask questions. Never be shy about asking questions. The other person will welcome them. If you are unclear about what they mean, what they're thinking, why they're communicating in the way they are, stop and ask questions. What, where, when, who, how much, how and why. That will give you more information, the information you need and the information you can pick up visually. And it will give them an opportunity to explain themselves further and with, with further clarity. So if you're struggling with visual cues, ask questions. Don't be shy. It's totally acceptable. Secondly, and I've already touched on this, pause. If there is a silence, they will feel that silence. They will feel the need to feel the silence, to say something. And it's likely that whatever they say, it will be the information you need to complete the picture that you couldn't build earlier because of that lack of body language or visual cues. It can be nerve wracking to, to have that silence for a second or two or three, but it works. And, and then they will feel the silence with the information you need. So I, I, would, I would recommend that. If, if the conversation becomes really difficult and, and you, you're really lost, and you cannot read the other person because uh, that, that barrier. I think it's absolutely fine to say, look, perhaps we need to reconvene another time. Obviously, if it's not a job interview, if it's a, a meeting with people you know and people you work with, I think it's totally acceptable to say, look, I don't think we're getting what we need from this uh, for, for whatever reason. Let's stop, rethink our approach have an offline conversation and, and start again tomorrow or, or in a week's time. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so we'll move on to another question. Um, so from an anonymous attendee, uh, they say, when I am nervous or I'm quite passionate about a topic, I tend to talk at a fast pace, sometimes without my own awareness. Do you have any tips with making sure I self-pace or make me more self-aware of what pace I'm talking at? Uh -huh. Thank you very much for your question. You're not the only one um, who, who struggles with this or, or who experiences this, this challenge. And um, this comes back to having a, a plan of action, I, I would say, at least in my experience. If you haven't thought through what you really want to say. If you haven't simplified your, your thinking to those one, two or three points, if you haven't prepared before the online communication event, your brain will accelerate, your, your voice will raise, and you will carry on talking and talking and talking more and more quickly because there is so much you want to share and you want to say that there is no way to stop it. And, and then, as you say, you become aware of it and it becomes faster and, and more out of control. Try and bring your thinking, your, your pitch, 
your ideas, your, your proposal, your message to three key ideas. And, and you can write them down in front of you. One of the advantages of communicating online is that you can have props with you to, to assist you with communication. You can have a piece of paper with notes or you can, ha you can have something up on your screen to, to assist you with how you deliver your, your message. So I would say simplify and try and clarify your thinking before you, you start the call or, or the, the meeting. And the other thing that you could try is breathing exercises before the call to, to calm your nerves, um, fill your lungs with oxygen, and, uh, and, and feel that sense of, of tranquility and, and control before you, you begin uh, bringing your, your blood pressure down a little. Uh, so those five minutes before the call, in fact, tend to be crucial. If you are emailing or working or speaking on the phone or doing something busy before you, you're going to communicate online, it's highly likely that you will come across as, as stressed or too fast or a bit out of control. Before you, you get online or before you get on camera, try and have five minutes of, of peace and quiet and, and I think you'll feel, you'll feel more in control in that context. Great, thank you for that. I'm definitely guilty of talking too, path, too fast myself, so. We all are, we all are. Very helpful. Um, so we'll just squeeze in one more. Um, if we haven't managed to answer your question, um, you can get in touch with either the SYP on social media or with Carlos directly after the event. Um, so our last question is from Esther. Um, so there's been a lot of talk in lockdown about Zoom fatigue. What are your tips for captivating an audience that has a much narrower attention span than they might usually do under normal circumstances? Uh-huh. Thank you for your question, Esther. A, a very relevant and, and timely one. And, and yes, we, we're all a little tired of, of Zoom and, and being on camera and, and being online. I understand it. My recommendation to, to keep people's attention, to capture people's attention and stop them from checking their, their Facebook account or, or their email or from switching off from the conversation completely is to use... Um, powerful images, if you are using a slide deck or a PowerPoint presentation, um, simple, powerful, colorful images on the screen will get their attention far quicker and far better than words. You will have noticed that my own slides are very minimalist and you don't see much text in them. Um, just give them one or two things to really focus on and, and whenever possible use images to, to grasp their attention. The other thing that you can do is make the meetings shorter. If they know they have an hour or 45 minutes, they're going to switch off sooner or later. If you and they know you only have 15 minutes or 10 minutes or 20 minutes, the focus becomes um, much bigger and, and much better. So try and experiment with making meetings and online communication shorter. Everybody knows they really have to focus, get on with it and, and cover the, the two or three things that, that really matter. And finally, Esther, if I may say, and I know I've, I've touched on this twice or three times already, silence. If you stop speaking, they will go, what's happening, what's going on? Um, they will start paying attention again. And then after two or three seconds, you can begin again. And I, I guarantee you, they will be listening. Um, they tend to switch off when there is constant talking. If you stop, you will get them back. Okay. Um, so we'll end the Q and A there. Thanks so much for your questions, everyone. Thank you, Charis, and, and um, I, I realize that we've only answered a few questions. If you, if you have any others, please feel free to get in touch with us after the webinar. As I said, I've got some homework for you. The best thing you can do to take this forward and to apply some of these techniques starting tomorrow is to identify the, the application, the tool you like the most, whether it's Zoom, 
Google Meetup, Microsoft Teams, Skype, whatever it may be. Create an account and begin recording yourself. Practice, practice, practice when it's easy and it's danger free. If you are already working in publishing and you've got a team, organize a video call, share it, and start experimenting with some of the things we've discussed today. Don't wait until the big meeting with the bosses. Don't wait until the job interview. Start flirting with those techniques and those small steps from tomorrow. You can, you can subscribe to LinkedIn Learning for £24 a month through your LinkedIn account. They have hundreds of courses on everything you can think of within online communication and public speaking. It's not the best source, it's just another source of learning and training and coaching. You can take as many as you like within a week or within a month and then you can cancel the subscription and you won't have to pay again. So I, I recommend LinkedIn Learning if you can, starting tomorrow, because there is plenty of fantastic material in there. There is a, a company in New York and California called Duarte Inc. It's led by Nancy Duarte. Uh, follow them on, on LinkedIn, follow them on, on YouTube. They've got lots of fantastic materials online for virtual digital communication. Uh, very clever, very savvy, very stylish. Um, some of them you have to pay for, some of them are free on, on LinkedIn, Twitter and YouTube and, and I strongly recommend them. And as well as all those things that you can start doing tomorrow, work with me. If, if you feel you need help, if you welcome the, the, the beauty and the privacy of one-to-one -one coaching, whether it's a job interview or, um, or a big meeting coming up, work with me and I can do that on a one-to-one -one level at any time, online or face-to-face. -face. I'm based in Oxford. But if you happen to work in publishing, I coach teams as well. You've got my contact details on the screen. Feel free to contact me on my email address, my phone number, or my LinkedIn pages and Twitter accounts. Before I hand over to Charis, I'd like to close by saying again, thank you so much for joining us today. I realize that it's only an hour hopefully an hour you found useful. Thank you so much. Look forward to continuing the conversation from tomorrow. Back to you, Terrace. Great. Thanks so much, Carlos, for leading this webinar. Um, it's been very insightful and I'm sure, I'm sure I'll be watching it back. Thank you. Get more tips from it. Um, and thanks to everyone for joining us today. Um, I hope you found this session as informative and interesting as I have done. Um, so keep an eye on your inbox for the recording of this webinar in the coming days. Um, if you're interested in joining us for future events, all of which will be online for this foreseeable future, um, please keep an eye on our social media channels where you'll find even more content to further your publishing career, including our new podcast. Um, so thanks again, and I hope to see you all soon.